Hey guys, it's Dr. Bacon. We're going to go off topic uh, today. I am going to go record my friend Evan, who is an awesome music instructor, musician, um, and he's going to play his, uh, tr his trumpet for me, I believe. And um, we're going to make a recording on my cylinder phonograph. So what I'm doing today is I'm getting it ready, and I guess I thought you guys might get a kick out of this so I'm gonna show you my cylinder phonograph so this is a turn of the century uh, sorry it's a little dusty this is a turn of the century this is a, this one's from 1904 and this is the first uh, this is not only the first record player if you will but it's the first time in history anybody heard their own voice, which is the true significance of this. There were music boxes for years, all kinds of music boxes, but this was the first time that there was a mechanism for a recorded voice to be heard and played back. And so I, um, I'm, I'm almost three years sober, but I used to drink a lot. And one of the things I would do sometimes when I was drunk was buy things on eBay that I shouldn't have bought. And I bought this for a few hundred dollars. I can fix most anything. And it had some issues and I put it, I got it running and then I kind of got obsessed with making recordings and becoming good at making recordings with it because no one can do that anymore. Or there's only maybe a handful of people in the world that can make a recording well on a cylinder phonograph. So that's one of my hobbies. Um, these are the horns that go with it. This is a... Walmart uh, transmission fluid funnel with a piece of copper that fits really well. This was my first actual horn. It actually sounds pretty good and it cost $1.88 at Walmart. This is the horn I use for recording. This is made out of a piece of uh, paper, a piece of uh, very stiff paper that's rolled up and actually uh, Mr. Edison himself is the person who I followed his instructions basically how to make this um, aspect ratio material and everything and then this is a classic uh, this is a classic typical Edison horn and I'll play a record for you guys um, so I'm doing a couple of things today the first thing I did was plug in my light bulb to make sure that works and I also have a uh, non-contact thermometer I'll be using tomorrow and I'll be using this thing too, this puffer because when I'm cutting a record it makes swarth which is the fine cuttings that come from the um, the, the wax being cut and you got to get keep that off of the cutting tool so there's um, two ways these machines work uh, the playback mechanism I have two, two playback uh, they're called uh, reproducers. The record has grooves, so this is what a record looks like. And there's grooves. Um, this is a blank. And so one of the other things I have to do is measure the diameters of my blanks. I have a mechanism to shave these down, but when they get shaved down too much, they're too skinny and then the cutter won't touch them. Um, so that's the one thing I need to do left and I might need to make a couple of blanks which is pretty cool too I have that ability so I'll show you how a reproducer works so the grooves in a record that we know it the needle well in the 78s which were the first disc records the needle moves back and forth then the, the records we know today with stereo the needle moves in one diagonal axis for one channel and one for the other. And there's four wires and two coils on that needle. The very early records, the needle just moves up and down. So there's a very small, um, it's a stylus. And it rides on the surface of the record and has a radius to it. And then that thing uh, works on that fulcrum and drives the, the uh, diaphragm in here, which creates a sound. The cutter 
which is how you make a record, has a huge piece, has a big flat piece of mica. It has a tiny sapphire cutting, uh, I wish I could get focus. Has a tiny sapphire cutting rod with a little radius cut in the edge of it. And it's affixed with beeswax into a piece of tin. Well, it's squeezed into a piece of tin and you know, this is made a hundred years ago. These are actually getting really hard to find. And then again, this thing floats. This thing floats by the weight of that thing and then vibrates to cut a vibrating uh, line into the surface of the record. Okay, before I play a record for you guys, we'll show you how this works. So it's all totally mechanical and it's driven mechanically. Actually, Edison, he, he was trying to promote electricity and DC electricity on top of that. That was like the whole Tesla Edison thing. And so he made these at, run on electric motors in the beginning and he didn't do very well selling them. And so Gramophone, I think was Gramophone that retrofitted them, started making these spring motors so people could use them that didn't have electricity. And I remember turn of the century, not that many people had electricity. Street lights were kind of new. So here we go. Here's how it works. There's a massive spring motor. Here's the winder and there's a reduction gear. The lighting's what it is. There's the reduction gear that gets driven by, this is where the crank attaches. There's the crank. And then this thing spins up through a bunch of up, uh, up gearings, spins these three weights, which are secured on spring plates here and on this disc on this side. And so what happens when this thing gets spinning up, those weights come out and bring that disc to the left. So you're watching right here and that disc is gonna move, well, actually to the right as those weights come out. That's the governor. So this thing spins till that uh, pad, till that pad touches, so there's this is the brake, this is the on off switch, and the second pad that touches is right there behind it. And that goes to this adjustment where you can adjust when the pad where the pad position is which in turn changes the speed the record plays at so that's your adjustment and that's it and then there's a belt that goes up to the mandrel which is where the record goes so i'm going to play this record i have a lot of records but there these are some i've recorded this is a small collection there's some more but I really like um, the, the records from that era are really kind of annoying to me and um, usually just have like one instrument and some are racist anyway so I like these uh, these operas and they're they're also kind of hard to come by but they really do a job l making these things sound great and uh, I use two hands here there we go. So this is an opera. Uh, I opened the gate here. This has a taper. You never touch the records because the skin, the oil on your skin makes them moldy. And you can see the lines on the record. They're all two minutes from this early era. Close the gate. Put the needle on the record. And you can see this has a big weight. To, um, so the there's also two flavors of records. The one I'm going to make tomorrow is a softer wax. If I played it back with this, it would be very loud for one or two times, but it would wear the wax down. These are pressed records. They're called gold molded records because they use because Edison used gold as a release agent. Um, this is my crane. This is a. Hawthorne and Shebel Crane. They made a whole like line of accessories for your record player. And this is my, I think they call these 
witches hats so that hangs on my crane and then this is called a carriage this goes back and forth this pin is allowing the needle to be off the record right now so I can move it back and forth and then I'll um, put my crank back on wind it up it the spring motor lets you play about four records before it so this thing's actually feeling pretty wound right now so let's leave it there and I'll let it spin up before I drop it So the other thing that makes these different is it has a gear that moves the, the needle across. Because it has a gear, it's gonna allow me to do a recording. Records as we know them, the record pulls the needle across, but this it's actually driven. Very directional. Okay, I've swapped the reproducer for my recorder, and now what I'm doing is I want to make sure these blanks I have have enough travel so what I'm looking at is to make sure this thing will be able to cut into the record enough and this is really that one's marginal but okay this is another cylinder this one's better there's more meat left on this one I have two that didn't come out. They're bad recordings. They are marginally on diameter, but I'm going to shave them anyway, just so you can see what the shaver looks like. This is my Edison utility shaver. We'll take it outside. So this was part of an office suite 80 years ago and you would have a, a dictograph machine that um, the boss would speak into and then he would present, uh, he would present the, um, the secretary his recorded memo or dictation on one of these cylinders. Here's one. And so you would record, uh, the boss would record his 
dictation on one of these cylinders and then at the uh, secretary's desk she had a little playback thing not not unlike my cylinder phonograph but uh, instead of a horn it had just a tube with some like a stethoscope and earphones and then she would type up the letter then the last part of the procedure was to erase the blank uh, erase the recording uh, for security purposes and then create a new blank and so these things you could you could erase them uh, several times so what's inside of this thing is a old ancient Edison motor and the belt was gone I made a belt out of just a piece of um, o-ring material that I glued the ends together and I also did a delete on a fan so the other thing that would be in here there'd be a little bag a little bag would go here and there is a fan that's supposed to suck the shavings down into the bag well it's pretty insufficient it makes the thing run super slow and uh, you really don't want to breathe this stuff so I just use my shop vac so it's gonna be a little noisy but we'll make a we'll, we'll clean up I have two records I'm gonna make a little smaller clean up a little bit this thing has a uh, a weight it has a cutter on it it's also driven uh, with a uh, a worm gear that's geared and then it has this little uh, two indentation thing and I have to really look carefully to see which is the final cut and which is the but this raises it ever so slightly and gives you a, a few more thousands cut at the end okay here's one of the two records I'm gonna shave down um, this was from a some friends band called Cubensis it was way too loud and it's just a bad recording in general really cool Grateful Dead cover band that plays in the Southern California area for a long time um, and the next thing I'm gonna do is I wanna there's an adjustment here and I'm gonna loosen this register this curved portion which is impossible to see because of the lighting there at my pinky that registers on the record and that gives me kind of a reference where the needles gonna land so that's what you're going to see me doing. I'll turn this machine a little bit so you can see it running. Uh, I'll also be running my shop back. Gathering up all this swart. You ready? cuts a little on the deep side but I'm letting it run out I'll give it another pass why you don't want to go too deep one you want to preserve that cylinder diameter the best you can oh shoot I've cracked the record because I was cutting too hard the other thing it will do it will put strain on the on the record and you'll end up with some noise so yeah I basically have a, a peripheral crack that I've caused here that will make for a noisy recording I'm still gonna do the final pass here um, we'll do better on the next one but now I'm gonna flip this little lever and it's just gonna drop it down just a little bit more for a, a cleanup pass And that's how you uh, you erase a record. I'm gonna go back inside and check the double check the diameter on the um, recorder just to make sure it lifts off. 
see if it's good, and then come back and do the other one a little more carefully. Hey, guys, I really do appreciate the visit. I'm Dr. Bacon. Um, my channel's actually about growing at home uh, legally and safely, but I do all kinds of off-topic things, and I just wanted to share this. Tomorrow I'm going to be recording my friend Evan, and uh, we will listen a little bit to him about uh, how his um, instrument works, and then we're going to do a recording uh, without a lot of uh, to do. Anyway, I hope you have a great day, and thanks for the visit, and stay tuned. Bye.